بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Chaplain James Yusuf Yi I'm a former U.S. Army Muslim chaplain served out in Guantanamo Bay I start first by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking that blessings be sent upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. We're discussing the topic of faith in a time of crisis. And what I'd like to do in this session is really discuss a certain aspect of faith that I experienced during a time of my personal crisis. My personal crisis was really back in 2003 while serving as the U.S. Army Muslim chaplain in Guantanamo Bay, working with prisoners, Muslim prisoners, held in this prison, I would subsequently be falsely accused by my own government of heinous crimes, like spying, espionage, aiding the enemy, which all warrant the death penalty. I was thrown in prison, locked away for 76 days, accused of these crimes and even threatened with the death penalty. I could have been falsely convicted by my own government of capital crimes and sentenced to death. Alhamdulillah, I was cleared of accusations, cleared of charges. I'm able to speak with you about this particular topic of faith during a time of crisis and this particular topic or aspect that I want to touch upon now. And that's Ramadan. Now, Ramadan, for most, may not be a time of crisis. But for me, when I experienced this harrowing ordeal in jail for 76 days back in 2003, it was during the month of Ramadan. Out of those 76 days, 30 of them were during the month of Ramadan. I spent an entire month of Ramadan in a single isolated cell back in 2003. When I look back and recall that time, I remember how I was stripped of the, some of the blessings of Ramadan, like going to the mosque, going to the Islamic center after Isha prayer and making taraweeh, praying the extra Ramadan prayers at night. I didn't have that opportunity to do that in the mosque. That was stripped from me. Yes, I was able to do it in my own cell, but I didn't have the blessing of standing shoulder to shoulder, foot to foot, next to my brothers in Islam at the Islamic Center making taraweeh prayer. I remember when I look back on that time, spending Ramadan in that single isolated cell, I didn't have the blessing of breaking fast, iftar with my family or with my brother at the Islamic Center, in which many communities break fast together in brotherhood. That was stripped from me. I would only be able to break fast by myself in that single solitary cell. I feel as if I was missing many of the blessings of, of Ramadan. Ramadan is a blessed month for all Muslims all over the world. As it says in the Quran, Shahrul Ramadan, Alladina Unzila Fihi Al Quran, Hudan Nas, that the month of Ramadan is the one in which the Holy Quran was sent down to mankind as guidance. Alhamdulillah, when I was in that cell for 76 days, I did have a copy of the Quran. I was permitted to have a translation of the Holy Quran. A, a translation, the Abdullah Yusuf Ali translation of the Quran. And this is the actual Quran that was with me during those 76 days, during that year in which I spent the entire month of Ramadan in a cell. I had the Quran, the Quran that was sent down in the blessed month of Ramadan. But yes, I spent that entire month of Ramadan in that cell by myself. But I fasted every one of those days. 
And every year when Ramadan comes, as it did this year, and last year, and the year before, I emotionally remember that time that I spent that month, that particular year in 2003, Ramadan by myself. Today, now I also look closely at the fasting of Ramadan because of that experience and the blessings of fasting that we all can receive fasting our holy month. I want to point out some of the hadith that references uh, some of the virtues of fasting. A hadith that you find collected in the collections of Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim is one that says, Man sama Ramadana iman in wa ihtisabin ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. It says in this prophetic tradition, in this hadith, the Prophet وسلم, says that whoever fasts Ramadan with faith, with Iman, seeking its rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will have his past sins forgiven. Well, alhamdulillah, this is a blessing from Allah. It's one of the blessings of Ramadan, that those who fast Ramadan have their sins forgiven. Another blessing of fasting is also found in the collection of Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, said, مَا مِنْ عَبْدٍ يَسُومُ يَوْمٍ فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا بَعْدَ اللَّهُ بِذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ وَجْحَهُ عَنِ النَّارِ سَبْعَيْنَ خَرِيفًا The Prophet, peace be upon him, he said that any of his servants, any of his worshippers of Allah, if they fast for one day for the sake of Allah, Allah will remove that individual's face, will distance that individual's face from the hellfire, a distance of 70 years. And of course, that's a reference to a great distance. So anyone who fasts for the sake of Allah just one day will have his face removed from the hellfire a distance of 70 years. Alhamdulillah, we fast 30 days of Ramadan. Every year of our life, how far is that from the hellfire that Allah removes our faces for just fasting for His cause? Another great virtue of fasting is found in, again, the collection of Sahih Muslim. And it's actually one that shows honor to the Muslim for fasting. In this hadith, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Inna fi jannah baban yuqalallahu riyan. He says, Verily, in paradise, in jannah, there's a gate, a door to jannah that's called al riyan. That's the name of this special gate called al riyan. Yadkulu min husa'imuna yawm al qiyamah. That on the day of judgment, those who fast get to enter through this special gate. And no one else except those who fast can enter this special gate called Rayan. Only those who fast can go to this special gate into paradise, into Jannah. You call Aina Sa'imun Fayakumun. And then it will be said, of course, on the day of judgment, where are those people who fasted? And those people who fasted will stand up. They will get up. And no one else except them, those who stood up, those who were fasters, will be able to enter. And then after they go in, after those who fasted in their lifetime go in through this gate called Rayan into paradise, it will be shut and locked. No one else will get to enter. But alhamdulillah, it's a blessing from Allah. It's an honor from Allah that when we fast, we have our own special entrance into paradise, into Jannah. And it's that gate called Al Rayyan. Insha'Allah, all of us, all of us Muslims who fast during Ramadan, 
will be able to enter this gate called Rayyan. Amin. These are just some of the virtues of fasting. Things that I look upon every year when Ramadan comes. Aspects that I look at when I might perform a supplementary fast throughout the year, whether it's a Monday or Thursday, or whether it's three days out of every month, like as recommended by the Prophet, to fast on the white days. That's the lunar calendar days of the 13th, 14th, and 15th, when the moon is full. Or some other days which are recommended to fast. We can see that when we fast, we have blessings. We have benefit, virtue. Our sins are forgiven. Our face is taken out of the hellfire. Our soul is raised in honor as we receive or we have our own gate to go through. Back in 2003, again, I was facing that time of crisis. I was thrown in prison for 76 days. Those 30 days of that time in Ramadan was spent alone by myself. Ramadan is a very emotional time for me every year for that fact. And today I'm very grateful to have the blessings during Ramadan, like I did this year, to stand next to my brother and pray shoulder to shoulder, foot to foot, to break fast at the masjid, share a meal with the community. Alhamdulillah, those are great blessings. Time of joy in Ramadan. Things that had been stripped of me back that year in 2003. That's an aspect of faith that I experienced during a time of crisis. After the break, we're going to continue with some more aspects of Ramadan and things that surround it, uh, merely because it was something I experienced during that time of crisis. Again, continuing with the subject, faith during a time of crisis, we'll continue and resume after the break. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm James Yusuf Yee, and welcome back to our discussion. Uh, let's continue with that discussion along those lines. Ramadan is a very blessed month for all Muslims all over the world. And one of the spiritual aspects of Ramadan that many Muslims engage in to get closer to Allah is something called itikaf. Itikaf, meaning secluding yourself, isolating yourself in the mosque, in the Islamic center for a number of days in Ramadan. There's a hadith from the collections of prophetic traditions where Ibn Omar said, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yattakifu al-ashra al-wakhid min al-Ramadan. He said that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the Messenger of Allah used to make i'tikaf the last 10 days of Ramadan. There were other hadith that also suggested that in his last year of his life, he made it the calf for 20 days. However, it's common practice by many Muslims to spend the last 10 days of Ramadan because this was the sunnah, this was the practice of the Prophet, peace be upon him himself, making it the calf. The idea is secluding yourself in the mosque so you have that time to pray to Allah to remember Allah, engage, submerge yourself in the dhikr, athkar, to seek forgiveness from Allah, to read Quran, to all of the things, all the spiritual aspects of worship during the last 10 days when rewards for those deeds and worship may be multiplied. This is the goal of itikaf to increase your reward in those blessed 10 days of Ramadan. Sometimes when I look back at my personal crisis, my time of crisis, when I was thrown into prison, locked away, 30 days in Ramadan, held in a single solitary cell, spending that blessed month by myself individually. Sometimes I look at that as being at the calf. No, it wasn't in the Islamic center. It wasn't in the mosque. But I was secluded by myself 
in the cell where it was only me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that the Prophet Muhammad has said, Inna Allah ma'ana. He said that when he fled from Mecca with his good friend Abu Bakr as Siddiq. And they hid in the cave of Thawr for three days, three nights. What did Abu Bakr say? Abu Bakr had said, we're only two people. It's only two, two of us. And the Prophet was basically saying, don't worry. Inna Allah ma'ana. That verily Allah is with us. And that makes much greater for them just two. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected them from the pagan Arabs who were chasing them down. But for me, when I was in that cell by myself, I was there only with Allah. I was in isolation. I was in ittikaf, in my view. I had that time to spend reading the Quran cover to cover. I had that time to make dhikr, to make dua, to ask for forgiveness, to seek refuge in Allah, the one who created me, the one who actually put me in that situation. I had the time during that isolated period of seclusion to thank Allah. Thank Allah that he put me there. Because ultimately I understood that was his will. That was his plan that I was there. I came to a point in my faith that even though I hated being in that cell and hated being there during Ramadan, that I could at still thank Allah for the situation that I was in. Everyone has much to be thankful for. Certainly in Ramadan, we as Muslims have much, much to be thankful for. But that aspect of dhikr Allah, which I would submerge myself in, I would remember taking inspiration, reading the Quran and reading the words where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرُكُمْ Where Allah says, remember me and I'll remember you. So, in my seclusion, in my loneliness, in that single solitary cell, I knew that if I remembered Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, deed as he told me in the Quran, will remember me. And alhamdulillah, I can say that Allah remembered me. He took me out of that cell. He cleared my name. All the charges, all the accusations against me were dropped. I was cleared. My record was wiped clean. But alhamdulillah, I was one of the very few Muslims in my country who experienced such an ordeal and then was completely cleared. Allah remembered me. When we talk about remembrance of Allah, when we talk about dhikr Allah, we can refer to the phrase or the ayat in the Quran where Allah says, وَلِذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ That the remembrance of Allah is indeed greater, something azim, something akbar, something great. That's remembrance of Allah. And why is it so great? Because when we remember Allah in all situations, it's a reconfirmation of our faith that He is over all things, that He created all things, that He created me, He created you, and that ultimately He is the one that we go back to on the Day of Judgment. Again, dhikr Allah was something I submerged myself into when I was in that self for 76 days. Remembering Allah. I remember reciting over and over sometimes some of the names of Allah. Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malak, Al-Quddus, Al-Salam, Al-Mu'tim, Al-Rahimat, Al-Aziz, Al-Jabbar. And recite the names of Allah as part of dhikr. Remembering that in all of these names, in all of these many 99 names, that I hope one day to memorize them all, that they are superlative, superlative descriptions for me as a Muslim to try and know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better and gain a tidbit of understanding of who my creator is. That was part of my thicker. Here's a hadith about thicker. And it's one of my favorite. The words of the Prophet Muhammad who said, Kalimatani khafifatani ala lisan, thakilatani fil mizan, 
Habibatani Ilan Rahman. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah Allahim. The Prophet Muhammad said that there are two phrases, two phrases that are light on the tongue, but they're heavy on the scale. And they're very dear to Allah the Most Merciful. And those phrases are Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah Allahim. And I used to recite in that cell over and over those phrases. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah Allahim. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah Allahim. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah Allahim. Over and over and over and over. Dhikr was something that I submerged myself. And one of the du'as I said over and over also was Hasbi Allah wa ni'l mal wakil. That for me as a Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone in this life is enough. Allah is enough because He is the best disposer of all of our affairs. That was the state of being I was in in that cell. I had to trust myself to Allah, to trust in Him. That situation, I had nothing, stripped of everything, my rights, communication, anything, freedom. But I had to trust Allah in that, in that situation. And again, it was thicker that helped me strengthen my faith on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, on a minute-by-minute -minute basis when I was alone and had no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, for me, that was sort of like an itikaf. I was isolated. I was unplugged from the dunya, unplugged from the internet, unplugged from cell phone, unplugged from television. It was all forced upon me. But one of the benefits of that time was getting close to Allah and really on a moment-by-moment -moment basis engaging in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My friends, brothers and sisters, we've been discussing the topic of faith in a time of crisis. We covered many aspects from death, Ramadan, and etikaf, and patience, and controlling emotions like anger, reliance on Allah, being tested. We conclude this discussion of faith in a time of crisis. But for those who are more interested in learning much more detail about that time of crisis I experienced as the U.S. Army Muslim chaplain in Guantanamo, you can read the book, For God and Country, Faith and Patriotism Under Fire. It goes in depth to my journey to Islam, how I became a Muslim, and then on to how I was assigned that mission in Guantanamo Bay as a chaplain and then ultimately wrongfully accused of heinous crimes, then cleared all by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, we conclude the discussion on faith in a time of crisis. It's been a great experience. My name is Chaplain James Yusuf Yi, former U.S. Army Muslim Chaplain of Guantanamo Bay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.